The pitch angle tracking of this aircraft is undesirably slow, with a rise time of nearly four seconds. The closed loop root locust illustrates the problem. As the pitch air gain is tuned for faster tracking, the dominant pitch pull approaches the open loop zero. These are the eigenvalues of the slow closed loop pitch response. Regardless of control effort, the open loop zero limits the pitch eigenvalue, which is dominant. To get around the open loop zero, we introduce a lead compensator. Now, the zero no longer limits the pitch angle rise time and the lead compensated closed loop response is much faster. In this lesson, you will learn how lead compensators shift poles around zeros and aircraft transient response is improved, but this method is not without risk and we must check robustness. Our goal is to tune a pitch tracking controller for a transport aircraft and then augment the closed loop response with a lead compensator. So first, we must obtain a linear model for control. Start with the nonlinear aircraft dynamics. Then, trim to find an equilibrium. Here, we trim about the glide slope for automatic landing control. This is non-accelerating, non-rotating, steady-state flight, where the forces and moments about the center of gravity sum to zero. Applying the trim routine from section 1.7, we arrive at the trim condition. Now, we numerically linearize the dynamics about that trim state and obtain a linear time invariant description of the aircraft dynamics about the glide slope. Our approach to automatic landing control addresses pitch and velocity requirements with two separate loops. Here, we focus on pitch control and assume that we can decouple the velocity dynamics from the pitch dynamics. This leaves a three-state system that is effectively the short period with pitch angle as the integral of pitch rate. Let's take a look at the modal characteristics of our system. Solving the characteristic equation, we get three eigenvalues, which we've annotated on this pole zero plot. We see the complex short period pair and the slow dominant pitch pole along with the open loop zero. Now we need to close the loop with a pitch control system. We apply the displacement controller with artificial damping as covered in section 1.3. We've applied a gain of minus 150 to KQ in the pitch damping loop. The damping effect to the short period is clear, moving the poles leftward and closer to the real axis. Now, the effect of decreasing the pitch air gain, KE theta, is multifold. The short period becomes less damped and less stable, while the pitch pole shows faster tracking, moving leftward on the real axis, approaching the open loop zero, which places a hard limit on the rate of pitch angle tracking. Meanwhile, the short period becomes more significant to the closed loop response as the real part of its eigenvalue gets closer to the pitch eigenvalue. In the step response, the short period is observed as Ke theta becomes more negative. Taking our pitch angle tracking controller, we insert a new transfer function in the command input channel. This transfer function is a lead compensator, and as the name suggests, it advances the phase of the pitch angle command to compensate for the slow closed loop response. It's characterized by a zero at Z, a pole at P, and a gain K. It's specifically a lead compensator if the zero is right of the pole in the real imaginary plane. If the opposite is true, it's a lag compensator. 
Now, our closed loop had the following poles and zeros. The lead compensator idea is to cancel the slow pole of the closed loop system and replace it with a faster one. Here, we select a pole four times faster at minus 0.88 and select a gain of four so that the steady state gain of the lead compensator is one. Now, through pole zero cancellation, the lead compensated closed loop response no longer has the slow pole that was in the closed loop. That cancellation is illustrated in this pole zero plot. leaving the system with the pitch angle pole that is now left of the open loop zero. In the frequency domain, we can see that the lead compensator advances the phase of the command input so that this closed loop system now has a much more desirable frequency response. The lead compensated closed loop system has greater bandwidth than the original and a much faster rise time. So far in our approach, We've assumed that we accurately know the pitch angle pole location in the closed loop system at minus 0.22. This was necessary for the complete cancellation of the slow pole and its replacement with the faster pole at minus 0.88. But there is always model uncertainty. Now consider that the model says the slow pole is at minus 0.18, but due to model uncertainty, it's actually minus 0.22. Then in the lead compensator, we would set the zero to minus 0.18 based on the information we have. So the effect is that the pole zero cancellation is not perfect. And the outcome of this is the step response has additional overshoot due to the zero that is not canceled. In this lesson on lead compensation applied to aircraft pitch control, we used a lead compensator to improve the step response of a transport aircraft. We applied a pitch displacement controller with artificial damping and used a root locus to tune that controller. We observed a slow response due to a dominant pole that was attracted to a zero and then introduced the lead compensator to improve that transient response. The idea was to cancel the slow pole and replace it with the faster one. We showed this cancellation in the root locus and then we plotted the step response, ultimately showing an improvement. But we also highlighted our sensitivity to model uncertainty, that is, uncertainty in the pole location and how it can introduce unwanted larger overshoot. We will apply the lead compensated controller developed in this lesson to automatic landing control systems for aircraft. This is part of the glide slope tracking control system where the glide slope error is translated to a pitch angle command which is achieved with a lead compensated closed loop aircraft developed in this lesson. The achieved glide slope is fed back and the loop continues so that the desired glide slope is achieved. This is Flight Control Fundamentals Section 1.6.2 Lead Compensation for Aircraft Pitch Control. Access this lesson and more at learngnc.com and support on Patreon to keep lessons like this one coming and gain exclusive access to the codes used to develop these lessons.